Guten Tag. Well, you've got your DCS set up and you've got your controls set up. Now it's time to get this bird in the air. I would like to thank Thrustmaster for sponsoring this video and channel. If you're in the market for an entry-level joystick and throttle, then I have a coupon code for 15% off in the description below for the Thrustmaster T-Flight Hotas 1. It's a decent start and definitely vastly superior to playing with just a mouse and keyboard. So, there are two ways we're going to do this. The first way is to use the instant action. Over here, if you select the SU-25, you have all the available maps that you have downloaded. More than likely, you're either going to see only Caucasus and or the Marianas map. Unfortunately, in the Caucasus map, you don't actually have a cold start anywhere. There is one for the Marianas map. Now, if you do have the Marianas map, go ahead and select it and click cold start. As soon as you click, it should load. Let it load. Don't click on anything. Do not alt-tab out. Just let it do its thing. And then when you're in the cockpit and it's ready to go, you go on from there. So if that's what you have here, go ahead and skip to this timestamp. If you don't have the Marianas map, uh, and you just have the Caucasus, well, we're going to need to do something a little bit different, and that is the Mission Editor. And the Mission Editor is insanely important and is a very powerful tool. So let's go ahead and start learning how to use the Mission Editor. We're going to set up our own mission in the Caucasus. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to click the new mission, and we're going to select the Caucasus map. Don't worry about anything over here. This is just how you set up different coalitions for red or blue. Everything is fine as is. Press OK. All right, so we're uh, greeted with the mission editor. You can right click and hold in order to move this around. You can scroll in and scroll out with the scroll mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out. Uh, what we're going to do is just select Senaki Kolki over here, zoom in on it, and place an aircraft down from this icon over here. And we now need to change this from USA to Russia and then select the SU-25T, there you go. And we need to change the skill to player so we can spawn into it. Now, we are in the air over here, we wanna change that, so we need to go from takeoff from ramp, and it's gonna to go to the nearest ramp location. All these numbers are ramp locations. Well, let's go ahead and select one because that's the closest one to the runway, and we do that over here, ba -ba 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 -ba, one, and we're done. And now it's going to spawn us cold here on this section. If you wanted to add weapons, you do that from the payload list over here. You can right click on anything here to uh, change your loadouts and whatnot. Uh, your paint schemes are over here. You can click on this and drag it around with your left mouse wheel. Zoom in and zoom out as well. Um, we're not going to put any weapons on board, so we're gonna just going to have a clean aircraft. Um, and uh, that's it. That's all we're going to do. So let's go ahead and actually fly this mission. If you would like to save it, go ahead and save it. And you can always practice your uh, takeoffs and landings from this mission. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to do this every single time, which kind of uh, is, is a waste of your time. Uh, if you wanted to put some really cool weather, by the way, then you would go up here to the weather tab and you can now change between the different little options that we have, which are really cool, by the way. Um, they did a fantastic job with the weather in this update. Uh, but we're not going to mess with any of that. We just want to get going. So let's go ahead and click flight and fly mission and we are done. This just asks you over here if you would like to save it or not. You can press no and you can just fly the mission without having it saved. And that's completely a-okay. All right, here we are in the Marianas map cold start mission. Uh, you're always going to be greeted with a briefing, and I strongly encourage you to always read the briefing, especially on multiplayer servers and campaigns. It tells you everything that you need to know. If there are multiple pages, there will be a little uh, checkmark arrow here that you can click through to see different pages. Uh, otherwise, it's just scroll up and down. Uh, for this, though, you don't need to really know anything, so we're just going to press fly. All right, so the very first thing we are going to do is turn on our power. We're going to do so with right shift plus L. This is our auxiliary power, and it is going to start moving some gauges around, and your heads up display is going to light up. Now, the AOA indicator here is going to trip, and that's because there's a lot of wind outside, and this is normal, and this wind is going to trip this little indicator. Uh, if it's annoying you and you don't want to hear it, you can press right shift plus N in order to silence it. This also silences your master caution warning. We need to take a look at this clock and we need to make sure that we will not move this aircraft until three minutes from the moment that we have turned our power on. So be aware of that. This is because of the internal navigational system alignment that is happening with the aircraft automatically as soon as you've turned on the power. 
So, yes, I know, I'm talking, I should be turning on the engines and everything, but we have three minutes to kill, which is the reason why I'm taking my time doing this for you. So, let's close the canopy, because it's allowed. We're going to do that with left control plus C. Ah, it's much better. And now we can go ahead and start our engines. Remember, don't move the aircraft, but we can start the engines. However, before we do so, there is one thing we absolutely need to make sure of, and that is that our throttles are at idle. Now, on my desk, my throttle is actually on idle, but as you can see, the throttle here is in maximum. If I try to start my engines right now, it's not going to work. It will either hang, because I have flooded my engine with fuel, or it will actually try to light, and then the engine's going to catch fire, and you may explode. So, not a good idea, right? Uh, if you do, by accident, start the aircraft this way, turn the engine off, and then watch the temperatures, and once the temperatures are down to zero, you can go ahead and try and relight the engine. Now, to fix this, all I'm going to do is jiggle the throttle. Oop, look at that. Now everything is exactly as it should be. It rarely happens, but it happens sometimes, and it trips people up, okay? Now that my throttle is at idle, I'm going to go ahead and press right shift plus home in order to start the engines. You're going to immediately see these two needles here on the RPM gauge indicating that the engine RPMs are spooling up. And as soon as those lights go out, our engines are good, we are spooled up. All right, and we are technically ready to go, but have we waited our three minutes? Let's check. One, two, three, yep. And that should be our angle of attack indicator going off again. Yep, that's it. It's gone. All right, so let's go ahead and actually taxi to the runway. But where's the runway? I've never been to this airfield before, so how do I know? All right, this is where we're going to press F10. F10 on the keyboard will bring you to the map. And just same thing as in the mission editor. Although in the mission editor, you right-click and hold to drag. In the F10 map, you left-click and hold to drag. I know, it's kind of a little counterintuitive. Uh, if you don't know where you are, if you can't find your airplane, press this little check mark here. It'll center the map on you. Scroll in. Oh, here we are. Okay, so it looks like I need to make a left turn, go here, blah, 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 and then on the runway, and we're going to take off. Wherever you are, just go find the nearest uh, starting point to the runway and just navigate your way there. It's okay to use the F-10 map to navigate, all right? You're going to be lost in the beginning, so this makes a life a lot easier. I'm going to uncheck this so I can move the map around. All right, let's get going. Now, in order to get going, I'm just going to need to apply a whole bunch of power past 50%. You see how long it takes the engine to spool up and go? Once we're moving, we can go ahead and spool back that engine and then just use your rudder pedals to move the nose wheel steering. And that's it. Let's just navigate over to the airfield. Can you tell I'm recording this on Halloween? That sound that you're hearing is the SPO or your radar warning receiver. That's this gauge right here. This can be really annoying in certain multiplayer servers when there's a lot of radar going off and your sensors are picking that up. That's what this is. So you might want to turn this sound this down, but not off. And you do so with right alt and comma to turn the volume down. Keep tapping it until it's quieter. Yeah, that's a lot more bearable. Okay, so as we're turning to the runway, uh, you know, one thing we would want to make sure is that we're taking off into the wind. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about that right now. Uh, since uh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And it looks like all the other aircraft are taking off in this direction. So before you move across this threshold, this yellow bar over here, I would highly recommend that you take a look to the right, you take a look to the left down the runway, make sure no one's taking off in the opposite direction or landing. And now that we know it's clear, we can push up to the runway. By the way, you press W to brake, obviously. One last check to make sure no one's turning. Nope, we're okay. You can always use the F-10 map in order to, tech, uh, to take a look to see if anyone's coming in uh, towards the runway. All 
right, so that's normal. That's ATC talking to you whenever you're about to get onto the runway or whatnot. Uh, it's going to try and uh, give you permission or deny you permission. Don't ever listen to it. Uh, in the current time being, it's terrible, so don't go based off of the ATC at all. However, if there are, uh, you're in a multiplayer server or you're in a campaign, you may hear other communications of other aircraft coming through the radio, which can be extremely annoying. Uh, in order to change that, we're going to press right shift plus M twice. And that will change it to player communications. Now, the only communications you're going to hear are those pertaining to you and only you. All right, so there are a few things that are about to happen really quickly as you're taking off. We're going to press our wheel brakes on. We're going to hold it down while we apply power about 70%. We can take a look at the RPM gauge. Uh, don't go past 70%, otherwise the engines are too powerful and your uh, wheel brakes will not uh, keep you stationary. We're just trying to spool up the engines to have as much power and thrust before we let go of the wheel brakes so that we can have a shorter distance for takeoff. Some uh, runways are shorter than others, and if you're very heavy, uh, you may have a longer distance of travel before you're actually able to take off. So when do we take off? Well, as we're running down the runway and we're going to apply full thrust, uh, the only job that you have is to keep the aircraft down center on the runway and then you're keeping an eye on the airspeed. The airspeed that we're looking for for a clean configuration, such as ours, we have no weapons on board and we have only a little bit of fuel on board. That will be around 200 kph. Kph is kilometers per hour. For these Russian aircraft, we use kilometers per hour for speed, and we use meters for altitude. Now, on the heads-up display, that is up here. On the left, we have kph, that's 80, and on the right, we have meters, that's zero. So why does it say 80 for speed right now? That's because the uh, device, the pitot tube, that gives you the air speed actually needs to have air moving through it. And once you reach, in this case, 80 kph, it finally can start calibrating and letting the aircraft know what speed it is actually moving through the air. Below that speed, uh, it doesn't really work, which is why it's stuck in 80. Many other aircraft have a similar design. So uh, when we say airspeed is alive, whenever you hear that, that's when you have enough airspeed that going through the pitot tube that you can actually start seeing the airspeed. Okay, so we're going to be looking for 200 kph in order to take off. If you're heavy, if you have fuel and you got some weapons on board, you're going to be looking for 240 kph to take off, okay? Then all you're going to do is you're going to take your stick and you're going to push it back about two-thirds of the way, so that's about full... That's half, so around there somewhere. And the aircraft will naturally climb on its own to go. As you can see on the left-hand side, you have a gear handle on the left, and then you have a picture of your aircraft with some status lights letting you know what's going on. The three green lights at the bottom tell you your gear is down and locked, and you have no other lights currently. What we're going to do is we're gonna drop our flaps to half, and when we do so, the indicator here will also let us know that the switch has in the middle position. So I'm going to press F. And as that happens, you see the two lights light up, letting you know that the flaps have gone down to half. And of course, if you wanted to do full flaps for landing, then that comes down. You should see the two additional lights go to let you know you have full flaps. But we need half flaps, so let's go ahead and press F to bring it up to half. Confirm that the switch is in the middle position. Yep, that seems good. All right, so the very last bit here is after takeoff, you're going to need to raise your gear and flaps. And you're going to need to do this before you reach a certain airspeed or you're going to cause damage to your aircraft. Your gear is going to be stuck in a down position. You're going to have asymmetric flaps, something like that. You don't want that to happen. You need to clean that up as soon as you take off. The gear should be up by the time you reach 10 meters in the air. And your flaps, you should clean that up by the time you reach about 340 kph. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that going. Press and hold W. I'm going to push the throttles up. I'm going to monitor the RPM gauge to reach around 70%. Wonderful. And I'm going to let go of the brakes. And now I'm going to apply full thrust. And all I'm doing is dancing on the rudder pedals, keeping the aircraft as close to the middle of the runway as possible. All right. 200 kph. Right around here, I'm going to put the stick back about two-thirds. I'm going to need to push it forward a little bit. All right, there we go. And around 10 meters, gear is going up. 
And 340 kph, flaps are up. We've cleaned up our aircraft. Now, how do we know what's a good climb speed? This right here. We're increasing an in airspeed. We're not pitching widely up, stalling the plane out or anything like that. They say a good uh, angle is to put the two pitot tubes onto the horizon, which we can't see because we're now in a cloud flying through rain. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? I love this new update. All right, well, that's about that. I will see you guys in the next episode when we're going to start talking about how to handle this plane in the air and then the landing procedures. That should be fun. <laughs>